What's up, people? So today, I actually have a session, not at the house, but at a studio in Nashville, Tennessee. It's at a studio called Blackbird Studios. Um, it's an amazing studio. It's a legendary studio. Um, it's always a pleasure when I have to go there. Uh, and when I say have to, I get to. Um, because it's just such a great studio. Um, not only do the rooms sound amazing, <laughs> is great but they have literally an, an endless amount of drums to choose from endless amount like walls of snare drums tons of cymbals like Sean where are we we're in the drum room Wow this is ridiculous just drums for days just ridiculous this producer is a Canadian producer that I'm working with. He's down here recording some songs, and it'll be two days. Today's Monday and Tuesday. We'll have both sessions from two to five. Um, load in is round one. I'll load in, like, I'll bring some cymbals in my favorite snare, my Ludwig Superphonic, um, and sticks. That'll, that's all I have to bring. And I don't even have to bring that stuff. I have to bring sticks. But other than that, they have everything. But I bring these cymbals and snare just in case, like, you know, I want that particular sound. Um, or, you know, the snares they provide, they're cool snares, but for some reason I can't tune them right. I always have cymbals and snares that work in every situation as like a backup plan of, okay, if the stuff they provide isn't working for some reason, I just know that I can throw that up, dial it in, and it's like there, and I know what I'm getting with it. I'm gonna show up, I've never heard any of these songs, so the thing will be set the drums up, make sure they sound good, tune them, and then go into the control room and listen and hear the song, write a chart. There probably is already a chart, but I'll mark up the chart like I need to to make sure that I know what grooves I'm playing, where the stops are, all that stuff. Talk to the producer and say, hey, what's the vibe you're feeling? What grooves are you feeling? Get that, put it on my chart, go in and track the songs and try to get it in one or two takes. I want to show you some of the stuff that I'm bringing today just so that you can see it. Um, so I'm going to go do that. So this stuff will probably be familiar to you. This is like my in-town stuff. But I have this snare case, my Ludwig Superphonic in it, six and a half by 14. That thing has been everywhere with me, ever. Got the cymbal bag that has um, Constantinople 22 inch ride cymbal, uh, 24 inch giant beat, paste peisty ride cymbal, um, my vintage Zildjian hats, and then my favorite crash cymbal, and then sticks. Um, I have in-ears in here, I have um, a headphone extender, and I have a tripod and a GoPro because hopefully I'll get some footage of the actual studio. So that's what I'm bringing, sticks, GoPro, in-ears. I don't like using over-the-ear things, and especially if a bunch of people used them, they usually don't fit right, and it's like it's hard to hear, and that's not something I want to worry about. So I bring my own in-ears, I have a headphone extender just in case I need it. Um, and then the cymbals and snare as a backup plan, but that's really it. So um, uh, I'll see you at the studio. All right, I just got here. Um, I'm gonna go in, see what happens. Hopefully I didn't park someone in here, but um, yeah. See ya. Everything feeling good, guys? Aw, oh, yeah. All right, let's hit it. Here's the top. It is 8.25 uh, on Tuesday morning, and I am about to, in about an hour, leave and go play day two of this particular session with this artist and this producer. I used, I ended up, you know how I brought my cymbals and my snare drum, I ended up using all the cymbals that I brought and the snare drum that I brought. They have a beautiful snare drum room. They have so many drums at Blackbird. There are so many drums to choose from, and I still ended up using my own because it's not always just about the nicest gear. It's about the gear that you're the most familiar with, and when they asked, with my, the, the producer said, hey, we need a deeper, fatter snare drum 
it just wasn't working on the two snares that uh, were there, which one was a Craviato, and I'm not saying anything against Craviato, and one was some other drum that I'd never heard of. They're amazing snare drums, but I know how to get that sound on my snare drum, like, instantly, because I've played with it for 10 years, and I know that if you drop this one particular lug, it does a certain thing, and, you know, I just know that drum so well, so that's why I always bring a backup snare drum, It's because it's good to have it so that if you get in a pinch, you can definitely get exactly the sound that you want. The other thing I want to talk about, the importance of reading music, and a lot of you are like, oh, I hate reading music, I just, like, you know, I play by ear or whatever, and that's awesome, and I did too for a really long time, but why reading music is so important is for sessions like these to learn songs super quickly. You just can't do it without reading music. These are the charts. Uh, I'll put it up on the screen. But these are the charts that I was reading off of yesterday. And all the red is what I wrote. And all the uh, pencil marks are what uh, the producer wrote. So these charts are just chord progressions. I'm not going to go into a whole thing about Nashville number systems. But we literally got one playthrough of this song. And I wrote all these ch notes in red, and then we played the song. We recorded the song. Um, and if I couldn't read music, there's just no way I'd be able to do that accurately. So and to give you reference, when the producer's playing these songs back, uh, they're just playing acoustic and vocals. It's called a work tape. And it's just the artist records vocals with acoustic guitar, and that's it. That's the only thing you get, an acoustic guitar with vocals. And that gives you the layout of the song, the intro, the verse, the bridge, the chorus, like whatever... But the rest of it is up to the band that's in the session to decide, okay, you're going to play this part, you're going to play this part, you're going to take this lead, I'm going to take this lead. You have a lot to think about when you're going from one listen through of a work tape to tracking different parts, you know? So it's my job, when we're listening back to the song, it's my job to not only make notes on my chart of, you know, break here, play this part here, whatever, but also be asking the producer, hey, what, what snare drum sound are you, are you thinking on this one? Before you start recording anything, ask, hey, I'm thinking about this stuff. Is that cool? And then if it is, you know, good. If it's not, then, you know, you have a chance to change it and work it out before you actually get into the session and take do two takes and then say, oh, no, actually, we've got to scrap all those parts. And then just totally, that's not what you want, right? You want to try before you record anything, you play down the work tape and then say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. Get it closer to what it is. And that way, if you need to make tiny adjustments, you can, but you're not changing the whole part. So what I'm going to do here in a second is I'm going to throw up one of these charts and I'll, and I'll put it alongside the video of me playing through the song and I'll highlight which section we're at so that you can see as I'm playing you can see what I was reading while we were recording it being able to learn songs quickly is so valuable it literally gets you paid more and I mean that because if you're learning songs for a gig and you can read music and they're okay with you reading charts on stage then you can listen through each song once and be ready for the gig as opposed to having to read through the songs and play through the songs like 20 times to learn them. If you can read music, you can listen once. So if you have 10 songs, you know, three minutes a piece, that's 30 minutes and you're done as opposed to 10 songs and you need to run them six or seven times. And now you're talking about, you know, five or six hours. The pay is the same. If you show up and play the gig and you don't make any mistakes and you sound great, I mean, we all make tiny mistakes, but, you know, by and large, if you play the gig and you sound great, it doesn't matter to the artist whether you took 30 minutes or six hours for you to prepare. They just want you to sound good and support their songs. So if you can do that in 30 minutes, I think that's better and you're getting paid more than if you did it in six hours. Do your thing, but I do think that reading music is the only way you can play sessions like this. And I just think overall being able to read, and it's not like just because you read, you like now you have to read on every gig or like, just because you have the ability to read and you've worked on it doesn't mean you always have to use it. Uh, you use it when you need to and when it's beneficial. And for me, it's very beneficial in a lot of circumstances to be able to read. I'm going to play the clip of me playing um, and I'll throw the chart up next to it so you can see what I'm playing. And I'd love to hear in the comments, reading music, what do you think? Do you like it? Um, if you have questions about Blackbird, I was there all day and, you know, there's a lot I didn't show you because, again, I didn't want to be a GoPro guy. So if you have questions about the studio or it, recording in general or drums or whatever, put them in the comments. I'll respond um, and I'll see you in the next lesson.